Let's pick up the latest news then, starting with the England camp. And good as the morale has been with Bobby Robson's men, uh, they were rocked yesterday by the news that the team doctor Vernon Edwards had been rushed to hospital with a heart attack. Jim Rosenthal now reports. The mood of the England team here in Saltillo was changed completely by that news of the doctor's heart attack because for England, Dr. Vernon Edwards is much more than your average run-of-the-mill team physician. For the players, he's been a father figure. Ironically, he was expected to give up his England job at the end of the World Cup. Vernon Edwards was introduced to the football scene by Sir Ralph Ramsey with the England youth side 16 years ago. For the last seven years, he's travelled the world with the senior squad. He'd written a special document to keep everyone healthy here in Mexico. The players, to me, seem to look to him almost as a second father figure in, in some way. How much of a loss do you think he's going to be to the players? Yes, he was that, uh, no question. They loved him, really, and adored him and respected him. And, uh, you know, they knew he was on their side because he was a very confident uh, person. Not confident, but confident, you know? and they could trust him. Uh, we'll miss him. The doctor was the man Gary Lineker turned to after damaging his arm in Canada. But it's skipper Brian Robson who's furrowing the manager's brow. In Los Angeles against Mexico, the shoulder went again. Don't panic was the official message, but the concern was obvious. In Colorado, leg injuries hampered his preparation. And here in Mexico, he's been the perfect ambassador, hiding his frustration. This weekend, we'll know if Robson or Ray Wilkins, his roommate, will lead England out against Portugal on Tuesday. The dilemma is, do you choose a half-fit Brian Robson or a fully fit but inexperienced Steve Hodge? There are two big differences between England 86 and the squad that came here in 1970. First, sunbathing is encouraged. And the public relations have been excellent. The friendly against the Mexican champions Monterrey and the players' discipline and patience must have swung neutral support England's way. And finally, we on ITV are delighted we've been able to do our bit for England. Dr. Leslie Young from London Weekend Television, who's in Mexico to try and keep us all fit, is assisting the England party pending the arrival of a replacement for Vernon Edwards. I'm glad we're of help. As for the Scots, they have yet to arrive in Mexico. Today they've been to Hollywood, and tonight they play a warm-up match against a local team. Well, what awaits them at Netsa, where they play their group matches? John Helm reports from there. Well, Brian, Hollywood's only about a thousand miles away from Neza, but you know, this is another world. You simply can't avoid the sad and shameful sights of squalor. And the reasons for that are quite simple. The population here, three million, is growing at the rate of 1,000 a day. The average wage here is two pounds a day. Many of the people have to scavenge for their food. The children only have the mud to play with. Well, the Scottish supporters are going to see all of this on the way to the stadium. They'll have to beware too, I'm told. There are cutthroats and pickpockets around. Billy McNeil, you're down in the stadium. You've been all over the world. Have you ever seen anything quite like this? Well, to be honest with you, I'd hoped I wouldn't have seen scenes like that. I'd hoped these were only figments of people's imagination, but I've seen them, and it's, it's ridiculous that people have got to live in such conditions. Um, having said that, you come to the contrast here with the stadium, and certainly Scotland, or any other team for that matter, can have any cause for complaint here. The, the ground is excellent, good pitch, good facilities, and there's no reason why Scotland shouldn't open convincingly in, against Denmark in the, in the first match. Thanks very much, Billy. So there we are, the two faces of Neza, and this is what the fans and the players of Scotland can expect here next Wednesday. Well, this is Casualty Corner, the, uh, the three lads who've had, well, probably the most worrying injuries on the trip so far. Let's start with Jimmy Quinn there on the far side. How's the foot, Jim? Well, uh, I sprained it in Albuquerque, and the first couple of days that we, we got here in Guadalajara, I made the mistake of training again too early, and I hurt it again two days ago, I think. I just hope that another couple of days I'll see my foot all right. Jimmy, Jimmy Nickel, uh, you had quite a nasty crack on the knee, didn't you? How's that progressing? I tried. It was... Uh... It was just a crack and easy wee Bernie Maganelli. I thought it was going to be a, a bit worse whenever I first done it, but uh, the swelling's gone down, the bruising's gone away. A couple of days rest and it should be all right. Norman, is it still the Achilles tendon trouble that's keeping you out of training at the moment or not? Um, no, not at the moment. Um, I cleared that one up a couple of days ago. Um, the first day I came back, I moved over my other ankle and I've just um, hurt the ligaments a bit and 
John says a couple of days, maybe at the weekend. Um, could get back in the full training and should be okay. So you, you should be playing on Tuesday, that's the good news? Hope so. Great. All right, thanks, lads. So the first match is against Algeria on Tuesday, and it's at the March the 3rd Stadium. An unusual name, and uh, yesterday Billy Bingham and some of the squad members went along to see it. It's a very compact stadium. It's got a fairly small capacity, 30,000. Well, the pitch was in immaculate condition. Everyone at the stadium was very friendly indeed, and Billy Bingham was delighted with that. I think the stadium is absolutely beautiful, immaculate, and Eduardo, I want to congratulate you on the grass and everything else. Thank you very much. First class. I think that's no light. We have the best stadium in Mexico. It's a beautiful. small one? Yes, yeah, yeah, that's a yeah. small one, I know, but, it's but that's the best. It's beautiful. And the best people too. <laughs> Can they support Northern Ireland? Yes. Is it possible? Yes. Will you persuade them? Sure. OK, you tell them we need them. <laughs> Bill, one, okay. one quick one. The World Cup is getting very close now. The first game in this group, Brazil against Spain. What's the ideal result for you? I would have thought that a draw, and probably Spain would like a draw with Brazil, but perhaps a draw would be the best result. Kevin, I'd like to come to you first of all. The, all this speculation is still about uh, Brian Robson and his fitness. And it, there's an alarming parallel with you, in fact, in 1982 in Spain as England's captain, and you were doubtful and didn't start off uh, in action in That's that. That's right. World Cup. Um, obviously, probably I better than anyone knows how he feels. Feel very sorry for him because this thing doesn't come around every year. You have to wait a long time for it. Um, it's slightly different in the fact that I definitely couldn't play. There was no way. I mean, I was laying on my back and, and totally unfit. He's it's probably worse for him, actually, because the, there's a chance he can play, albeit maybe at three quarters or, or even half of what we know he can. Um, as I say, with me, it was definite. And I, I feel sorry for him. And I think if people just left him alone, he will know better than anybody else yes. whether he's going to be fit or not, won't he? I mean, I hate to break into Ron Atkinson's uh, obviously heavy work sh schedule out there <laughs> in Guadalajara. Ron, but you, you know the fella better than anybody. I mean, uh, yeah. Will he push himself to play? I mean, should we play a half-fit Brian Robson? Or, or how do you see the situation as his manager of Manchester United? The, yeah, I think if there's any, ch any possibility of him playing, he'll play. Um, the problem he's got is the, the Achilles tendon. Now, obviously, Bobby Robson's problem is if he plays him in the first game, he could well put him out for the rest of the tournament. But I think Rob will be sensible. That's Brian Robson. I, I think if, he's, if he feels he can be fair to the players he's playing with and do himself justice, I think he'll play. Really? Ian? We're all just sitting here back home, uh, Ron, and uh, the papers have been full of it. Uh, you know, you're out there with him in the camp. You know, how fit really is he? Well, I haven't spoken to Brian since he, uh, since he left for Colorado Springs. Um, I'm expecting a phone call from him later on this evening just to discuss his, his problem. Um, but he's a professional. He knows what the situation is. He knows how important it is to England. And I'm sure he won't, let, he won't take the risk of letting himself or his country down. Kevin. I'll tell you what was one of the biggest problems I had in Spain, and, uh, and that was that Ron Greenwood was coming up and saying, look, come down and, and be with the lads and smile and try and be happy. And it's, it's really difficult. Yes. You, know, you, you know you want to keep the atmosphere going. It's your job as captain to, be, to set an example, of which Brian Robson does that magnificently. Yeah. But to try and smile when you're, you're not ready and, and your whole world's going by you, yes. it's I think very it's difficult. It's going to be hard to be, for him to be sensible. I think that he's got to get out there and he's, he's got to give it a crack. I, don't, I, don't, I think that either, either his shoulder or his Achilles, whatever, I think he's got to get out there and play. And that's the only, that's the only way. Well, David Pleat, you're, you're with the, uh, the England camp out there. Uh, what is the latest news on Brian Robson and what's your view on this uh, crucial situation? Well, he's gone down to Sotir Tier this afternoon and um, he'll have a really hard crack at it. And if he comes through it well, I'm sure they'll be very pleased and they'll be looking to put him in. But I think that the boy Hodges done particularly well and he'll be eager to get a chance. I don't believe any man is indispensable and um, it would possibly save Robson for the later stages because I think we can get through this group. We are set up very well there at the moment, aren't we? I mean, things are looking good for England. The spirit's very good, the morale's high. Um, they've had plenty to do around the camp. They're in beautiful surroundings. They've managed to keep themselves occupied. There's plenty of press here. There's been a good camaraderie amongst the players. And uh, I think they're anticipating a start now. They can't wait to get going. But the spirit is exceptionally good. One of the areas, David, still being discussed is who we will play up front. I mean, it's clear that Bobby Robson has made up his mind. He hasn't announced it yet. But who do you feel will be the front men looking for the goals? 
Yes, I think Beardsley's had a very good um, sessions with them since they've come out uh, on this training. But um, Lineker will get the place with Haitley, and I think Waddle will be the third forward. Right, let's move on now, if we can, to Billy McNeil. I think you're in Mexico City, Billy, aren't you? Uh, still, still awaiting, I think, the arrival of the Scots, Bill, aren't you? They're That's still... right, Brian. They, they haven't come in as yet. But there's um, a lot of... I'm sorry, there's a lot of speculation, it... Billy, there's a lot of speculation yeah. about the, uh, the form of Charlie Nicholas and that he might, in fact, be a key man. Graham Soonis was saying that uh, the other night on TV, and, I mean, you, you know the lad, you've had him at Celtic and so on back in his early days. Is this the big stage for Charlie? Well, he's certainly got the ability, Brian, and it won't be a bigger stage than this one. Um, he's got all the ability in the world. He's got all the confidence. I think the very fact that Kennedy Gleese has lost out will, will give him a further impetus. And really, it is a place for Charlie to shine, and he'll enjoy the big occasion, and I'm sure he'll have a go. Billy, Alex Ferguson has said, uh, you know, he's going to give Charlie a free reign. Now, when you had him at Celtic, that was the role that you gave him, wasn't it? That's right, Saint. Um, you've, got to, you've got to provide him with a supply and you've got to get him in the box, give him a bit of freedom. Don't ask him to be chasing after defenders, but if you can get the ball to him, he'll commit people and uh, he makes an opportunity, makes a bit of space and good finisher, good finisher. And he's looking good in training, I believe. So I believe, um, you know, training of, often cheats his Ian, but, uh, you know, we can build our hopes that he is looking good and he's perky and he's confident and he's cocky. It's a tough old group for you, though, isn't it? I think that's one advantage to us, Brian, to be frank with you. <laughs> yeah. That uh, yeah. whichever way we look at it, there's, there's not an easy game. And so we can't be accused of falling over a, over a straw, as it were. And I think Scotland are always better as the under, underdogs. Good. Let's, let's move on to Northern Ireland now with Brian Hamilton, a former international. Uh, always playing to their limits. Yes, uh, and delighting everybody as they did in Spain. Do you see another typical Spanish performance from them uh, here in Mexico? Well, I think they're very confident. I think they've got the, they've had a good training session before they went, and then they went to Albuquerque. I think they've enjoyed their stay, and there's one sure thing, they'll go over to Mexico and enjoy themselves. Who do you think are their key players? Norman Whiteside, obviously, I, I'd imagine, would be one. Well, I feel that uh, the players who have played in form recently, you, you must never discount Pat Jennings, who has been a legend yeah. in our time. Uh, I think he's a very, very important player to the Irish. Sammy McElroy is important. And also, like I say, Norman Whiteside. Norman Whiteside. Uh, Ron Atkinson, I know that there is obviously a feeling that, that Norman is such a competitive player. And I just want, I mean, he, he came through Spain brilliantly as, what, a 16, 17 year old. I just wonder if there might be a possibility with his style of play, he might get on the wrong side of referees out there? Well, I think that's always a possibility. He's an aggressive player, he competes for everything, and uh, sometimes runs the risks of. Uh, upsetting referees. I think one of the things that's going to happen is I think there's a possibility, you know, Norma might go back to playing up front out here. Um, I think uh, Billy Bingham has a feeling that Norma's ability to hold the ball up and get players up to support him might be invaluable out in the heat and altitude and uh, it could well be that he plays in, in a role similar to what he did in Spain. I think if that is the case, I think what we've got out there is a boy, Colin Clark, yes. who's an exceptionally good player with the ball, played the feet and uh, also with his back to goal. So if that is the case, Ron, I think that uh, Colin Clark could be looked at as well. Ron, before we Yes, leave. I think he... Yeah. Go on, Ron. Go I on. think he'll push himself into contention. And, uh, you know, Jerry Armstrong, the old war horse, he's out here and he fancies his chance of breaking back in the side. He's working very hard to break back into the team. So uh, there's a lot of competition going on. When you, when you haven't you been... You look around here, you... When you haven't been thrown out of training here, grounds we're... by the Algerians and things like that, Ron, I mean, have you seen anything much that really has impressed you? Um, I watched Brazil play yesterday. They're always good to watch, of course. They've got, uh, they've got exciting forwards coming forward. They've got midfield players that can create. But they do look as if they've still got a problem at the back. I know they won 16-1, but uh, <laughs> they weren't too good defensively. Ron, thanks a lot. Enjoy the sunshine out there. And thanks to all our lads out in Mexico. Mick, I, go on. I, listen to all the boys talk. It interests me. For me, I'd play the best England team, number one. You know, I mean, let's get it. Let's not say we're going to rest someone and play them in the next game. Let's get take one game at a time, get out there. Then if you've got to put someone in, put them in. Not try and save them for later on. The, the front position is interesting. Uh, Gary Lineker has obviously had a bit of a problem with his... Um, and Beardsley, Kevin used to play with him up yeah. at... Uh, wasn't it? I, think, I think Mexico will suit him, 
because it, it, you can't go on those long runs, and Lynn Aker likes them in behind, and I think Lynn, uh, I think the likes of Beardsley would do great out there, especially if you can get it to his feet. I think we've got, we got a month to get you to say Lineker properly for a start. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Lynn Aker. You're leaving with Lineker.